Hello everyone and thank you guys for coming out today to hear me speak a little bit about um, leadership and higher education but also talk about the community college and working at the community college. Uh, so again my name is Vertigo Moody. Um, I am the chair of the Department of Natural Sciences and so today I'm going to give you a, a little bit of history of how I got to where I am and why I chose this career and why it might be a career for you guys um, should you choose to go that route, okay? So let's first start a little bit about me, okay? So I was trying to think of some images that would encapsulate my early years of growing up and how that kind of formulated who I am today. Uh, and so, of course, we got the beach, Okay, so anybody from Fort Lauderdale may recognize this as the beach in Fort Lauderdale. So that's why I grew up, okay? Um, my parents were native Floridians. My grandparents were native Floridians. And so I'm a native Floridian, okay? Um, and growing up in Fort Lauderdale, um, I was a bit unusual as compared to the rest of my family because I didn't like sports, I really wasn't into all that. What I was was a big computer geek, right? And so this was my first computer, the Commodore 64. I think you young folks, you have never seen anything like this before. But this had less power than your pocket watch, okay? But that was cutting edge technology back then. Um, and that kind of fueled my passion for learning about computers. In fact, to tell you how geeky I was, okay, I would voluntarily go to summer school to learn how to program, all right? So imagine that, you know, a teenager voluntarily going to summer school just so they can have fun programming. So that kind of shaped a lot of who I am, and I'm still kind of a geek today, all right? Um, I was also in the marching band. Uh, these are the two instruments that I played in the marching band. And the only reason why I chose the flute was when I was in middle school, they had two instruments left over. They had the tuba and they had the flute. And I was like, yeah, I'm not carrying that tuba, you know. <laughs> so I learned how to play the flute and I learned how to play what we call the marching bells, okay. Um, and this is the symbol for my high school. So for Florida High School is where I attended. It, we were called the Flying L's. Very unusual mascot. How did we become the Flying L's? Well, this was back in the 60s when um, we always had a history of an excellent track and field team. And we were pouncing the competition and one of the sports commentators said, look at those L's fly, okay? And so, that's how we got it. Okay, all right, so that's a little bit about um, where I come from. Um, so um, when I graduated high school, um, I chose to come to the University of Florida, right? Um, it was one of the schools that I visited on the college tour. I was very impressed with the campus um, at that time. And at the time, I was pretty sure I was gonna be an architect. Um, and so when I toured their College of Architecture, it really solidified a really strong impression on me, okay? And then we'll see later on how that kind of changed. So I kind of changed my major maybe five or six times when I was at UF, all right? Um, I know t these days it's hard because they sort of pigeonhole you guys into, okay, you gotta select your major when you're in high school and you gotta continue that major all the way through college. But there was a time when they let you explore freely, okay? And so I went from architecture, then I decided that I wanted to build airplanes and rockets, and so I decided oh, I was gonna become an aerospace engineer. Then the market bottomed out on aerospace engineers, and I said, oh, well, I'm gonna become mechanical engineer. Then I thought about electrical engineering until I took an electrical engineering course, and I was like, yeah, this is not for me, okay? <laughs> then I went to civil engineering, and then I stumbled upon this thing called agriculture and biological engineering. Had no idea what that was, okay? Took a couple of courses in it, and I was hooked. Right? So in 1989, uh, I got admitted to the University of Florida. Um, fortunately, I had good grades in high school. In fact, I was the salutatorian for um, my high school. 
I miss being valedictorian because instead of taking an AP class, I took an honors class. And so AP, you get five grade points if you get an A. Honors, you get four and a half grade points if you get an A, okay? So I missed out on that, but that's okay, okay? Um, so in 89, got admitted to the University of Florida, um, and in 1995, got my Bachelor's of Science in Agriculture and Biological Engineering. And yes, it took me more than four years to get my degree. Again, that's because I was exploring. Okay? At that time, you didn't have all these credit limitations on how many credits you can um, do before you get assessed these penalties. And so I would just take classes just to try to figure out, you know, well, what this is class about? What is this class about? Okay? Um, and so I got my bachelor's in agricultural and biological engineering. At that time, um, many of my um, mentors was telling me that you really should go on to get the graduate degree. Okay? It's really going to be beneficial for you later on, and so why don't you do it now? It also didn't hurt that during that time, um, I was able to apply and successfully get a McKnight Fellowship. Um, and so these were the types of fellowships where they not only paid all your tuition and fees, but they also paid you a stipend for going to school. Now during that time, the stipend was about $15,000 a year, which is about 24,000 if you were to do today's dollar, okay? And so I said, sure, why not? Why not do it, all right? I stayed at the U University of Florida because at the time UF was the only university in the state of Florida that offered agricultural and biological engineering. And we were also still one of the top 10 um, programs in the country. Now we've actually number three, okay? Um, so very good program. They was gonna pay me to go to school. So I was like, all righty, why not do this? So. Um, when I got my bachelor's, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what agriculture and biological engineers do, okay? Some of you might wanna do that. So my specialty is in food engineering. Uh, so as a bachelor's, I was trained to actually go work for a food company. And these are the people, for example, if Kraft was looking at its cream cheese and said, you know, market, the market has told us that they want it to be creamier. How do we do that? Well, I was the engineer that would go figure out, okay, let's make the thing creamier, okay? So when I got my master's, um, again, I chose the same fill. Um, I was really enjoying that. Uh, so in 1997, I got my master's. Um, I minored in food science and human nutrition, okay? Um, and that was simply because, um, as I'll show you with my master's thesis, it required me to take a lot of food science, okay? And what I did was, my thesis was the biochemical pathway of acid adaptation of E. coli. Um, and this stemmed because during the, that time, there was several outbreaks of E. coli in low pH foods. So one of the biggest outbreaks, of course, was orange juice. And so at that time, every, it surprised everyone because they said, well, this is a low pH food. The bacteria should not be able to grow in this type of food product. And so um, what I was tasked with was finding out how E. coli was able to adapt to the acid environment. And so I did a lot of biochemistry. I did a lot of molecular biology. I did a lot of microbiology in order to do that. And I continued that with my um, PhD. And so in 2003, um, I got my PhD. Now, during all this time, I was still getting paid to go to school, right? So when I finished my master's, the same program, the same McKnight program approached me and they said, you know, we don't have anyone with an agriculture and biological engineer that has been uh, alumni of our program. If you choose to get a PhD, we will pay you to get your PhD, okay? Um, and so, again, I thought, hmm, do I wanna do that, okay? And it was a serious thing I had to think about because this was like four or five, six years of commitment here, okay? 
But at the time, by the time I finished getting my master's, I knew I kind of wanted to be a faculty at the university level. And I knew that the terminal degree was a necessity in order to do that. And so I made the choice to go ahead and accept their offer. And of course, with that PhD, they kind of gave me a little bit more money in the stipend. So it went from fifteen dollars to $25,000 a year. Okay? Um, and so I started working on my Doctor of Philosophy. And my thesis was thermal death kinetics of E. coli in orange juice. All right? What does that mean? Basically, I was trying to figure out how do you kill these microorganisms in orange juice, right? And thermal death kinetics is a term we use in food engineering to describe the model by which we can predict how much of that population will I kill in a certain amount of time at a certain temperature under a certain pressure. Okay. And this is the foundation of a lot of food processing. So the way we process canned goods, okay? How long do we process it so that we can ensure that it's safe? How long do I pasteurize your milk so I can ensure it's safe? All that is based on these things called thermal death kinetics, okay? Where we can determine that. And so a lot of this involved mathematics. Okay. So I took a lot of advanced level mathematics because I had to actually come up with the model for this. And the model is all math. Tons of partial differential equations that I had to do for this. Right? Now, if you ask me today, well, how much of that math do you remember? Well, not much, because okay? I haven't used it in 20 years. Right? So this kind of gives you a little bit of my educational background, where I started from. So. Um, it's unusual because I went straight through. Most people will take a break, they'll go work in industry um, before they come back and finish up um, an advanced degree. But in this case, the timing was just perfect, okay? You know, I was thinking about becoming a university faculty. I had this agency that was saying, do it, we'll give you money, do it, okay? And so I decided to take advantage of it, all right? And so, I'm fortunate in that when I graduated from UF, I had no debt, okay? All right, that was really great. So um, during this time also, I did something that completely changed the course of my career plans. And that is, um, I decided to do some adjuncting here at Santa Fe. Didn't even know what Santa Fe was. I had been in this town for about 10, 12 years, had no idea there was another institution, you know, north of us, didn't even know about it, okay? I only did it because I had a good friend that says, hey, you're pretty good at this stuff. You should really go teach at Santa Fe, okay? And that's because he was a student currently at Santa Fe. So I said, eh, why not, okay? So I interviewed with Sture, who was our formal chair, he called me about a week before classes start and said, hey, you still want an uh, adjunct for us? I'm like, um, yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> so you can imagine that summer, that's all I did because I was preparing my lectures the day before I was giving them. And I was spending four and five hours at night in addition to doing this stuff. Yeah, so it was a lot of work, okay. But at the end of the summer, I said, I like this stuff. I never thought about a career in teaching. I really enjoy my interactions with the students. And at that point, I really start considering, do I really want to be a university faculty member? Okay. So um, when we talk about biological engineering, okay, people always ask me, what is that? What did you get your degree in? Okay. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time sort of promoting my own major, all right? Um, and let you try to tell you guys what biological engineering is. So basically it's applying engineering principles. And engineering principles are skill sets, ideas, concepts that engineers use to problem solve. That's what we mean by engineering principles. And I'm gonna apply that to the food and agricultural sector of our economy. What does that mean? Well, one of the things we do is we design and we construct food equipment. 
So if you ever get a chance to tour, for example, the orange juice um, processing facility down in Lake Wells, Florida, they hire a lot of agriculture and biological engineers. Or if you get a chance to tour Campbell Soup Factory, they hire agriculture and biological engineers. These are folks who figure out how to make those factories work. And not only with the equipment, but the processes. How to ensure that this product meets the quality that the company wants. Or how to ensure that this product meets the safety guidelines of our regulatory agencies. And so you'll see food production engineers or packaging scientists. So when you look at the steam in the bag packages, okay, who came up with that type of idea? Well, those are agricultural engineers. Or you look at the way we have these innovative ways in which we can um, get food to last for many, many years without actually being in a can like the ready-to-eat meals and the packaging that surrounds them. That's what we do, okay? We also improve and construct and design agricultural infrastructure. So when you talk about things like um, looking at how irrigation systems work, okay? Or you're looking at, for example, how do we move this treated product, which is now sterile, from one location in the factory to another location in the factory so that we can actually put it in its container? How do we do that? That requires infrastructure. And that's one of the things we do. And so a lot of biosystems modeling is also what you see in agriculture and biological engineering. Okay, whoops, that went too fast. And then finally, um, this we really started to home in on um, when I graduated. Again, sustainability wasn't a big issue um, when I was going to school, but it was starting to become a big issue. And we began to integrate sustainable practice into agriculture and farming industries. Okay? So looking at things of how do we best utilize our land resources and our water resources. Okay? So if, if you're a student and you're thinking, hey, this sounds kind of interesting to me, okay? This might be a major that will work for you, okay? And they make good money, all right? So in the state of Florida, agriculture engineering with a bachelor's degree, probably gonna start with $46,000, $47,000, okay? In California, again, with the high cost of living, you'll be at like $60,000, $70,000 with a bachelor's degree. Okay, and it's high likely that you will get a good job, all right? So that's what an agriculture and biological engineer does, and that's what I was trained as, all right? All right, so 2002, um, I started adjuncting um, for Santa Fe College. Uh, again, my first class was general biology, so any of you guys who have taught general biology, that's where I started. Um, after about a year doing that, I really liked it. Um, fortunately, a position became available. And so in 2004, I was able to apply and successfully um, be employed by the college. I did a good job of impressing the screening committee. Um, and so I became an assistant professor. And so when you decide you wanna do a career in higher education, okay, you always start your career off as an assistant professor. And you will remain assistant professor until you reach what we call tenure. And tenure is, I don't want to say it's job security, but the institution have to show just cause of why they're letting you go. Okay? And there's a really high threshold for that just cause. Right? And the reason why we have tenure at these institutions is it allows us to do academic freedom. It allows us to speak of or do research that may not gel with the administrative priorities at that time. Okay? And so um, that's what you'll see in many of these things. So in 2008, um, I received tenure. Right? And then in 2016, um, I became department chair of the um, natural sciences, okay? Why did I decide to become department chair? I can make a difference, okay? You know, um, we have, you know, I'll talk to you about more, but this is a great working environment we have here at Santa Fe, okay? 
And at the time, I felt that I can really elevate our, part, our department to the next level. All right, and so I decided to take it, even though it's tons more work than being a faculty member, okay? All right, so that kind of shows you how I got to where I am today, okay? So why? Why did I choose to be a faculty member at a state or community college? Okay? And so I wanna talk a little bit about why you guys may want to think about being a faculty at a state or community college. For most students, it's not something that they think about. If they wanna teach, they either think, oh, I wanna teach in the K-12 system, or if you guys decide I wanna be a researcher, you're thinking at the university R1 level. We're kind of right in the middle that nobody really thinks about. But I'll tell you, it can really be a rewarding job. Okay, so why would you want to do this? Well, one third of the institutions in the United States are state community colleges. Now the reason why I keep saying state community colleges is because in Florida, when we say a state college, we're really talking about a community college, all right? In some, in, in some states like California, when you say a state college, you're talking about a university. Right? And so they still use the term community college. In Florida, we're using that term state college. And that's simply because with Florida, community colleges now can offer bachelor's degrees, and so the term community college didn't really fit. And so this is how we came up with the state college system. So about 1,300 of these across the country, okay? So we educate a lot of people. Um, if you like teaching more than research, okay? So for those of you who are thinking about going on to get a graduate degree, and you find that you're TAing for a class, and you want to do that versus being in your lab, this might be a career for you, okay? Because at the university level, it's all about the research, okay? Your performance, whether you get tenure, whether your contract gets renewed, it's about what the research I'm gonna be doing. How much money did I bring in? How many graduate students am I administering? And how many articles did I publish, okay? Whether you're a good teacher or a terrible teacher doesn't really matter, okay? So if teaching is really your passion and you're a person who says, well, yeah, but I don't wanna work in the K through 12 system, you know, a community college may be where you most fit, okay? 40% of full-time teaching positions come from the community college, right? Faculty positions are very competitive, all right? Um, so don't sort of discount a community college when this may be a good career path for you, okay? So 40%, that's a big number, right? I want a rewarding career I wanna teach at the college level. I do not wanna get a PhD, okay? You can teach at the community college, right? So most of our programs require a master's degree in order for you to be what we call credential, okay? Where we say you have the ability to teach at this uh, college, okay? So if you get your master's degree and you're thinking about teaching, okay? Think about the community college. Great professional working environment. I'll be quite honest with you guys, I still get up in the morning excited about coming to work, okay? And that is not a lie, all right? I always said, the time when I get up in the morning, be like, oh, I had to go to this place again, is when I'm ready to go, okay? So <laughs> I still enjoy it. So it's a great professional working environment. Here at Santa Fe, we have excellent colleagues. Okay, um, and so sometimes when you're thinking about a career, you also wanna think about, this is where I'm gonna spend a huge chunk of my life, okay? Is this something that can work for me, all right? Uh, good quality of life. So again, as a community college, yes, we do not make the salaries that the faculty over at UF makes, okay? That is in fact true. But I 
think we have a much better quality of life as faculty here at Santa Fe. Okay? We do not have the stress of publish or perish. Yeah, you have stresses over here, but it's something that I think we are passionate about. Okay? And then changing one student at a time, changing the world. Okay? Community colleges, and I'll show you the statistics, educate more minority students in the United States than any of the universities. Right? In fact, most minority students get their start at the community college. And so, you have a chance to really make a difference, okay? where we can change the thinking, where we can elevate the thinking and understanding of our students so that they can go on and make this a better world. Okay? Um, so I really like this. Right? I really enjoy when students come back and say, this really changed my path, and now I'm doing something that I really enjoy because of something that I, you talked about in the class or because of a conversation we had after um, class, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit about our students. So in the U.S., 1.87 million undergraduates are in the community college system, okay? So again, this is a large population of students. And particularly, we see that a little bit more of a third of all undergraduates will attend the state or community college system, okay? All right? Where it particularly becomes important is when you look at the low-income and minority students. So 44% of low-income students start at the community college, okay? This is, again, where you can make a huge difference in the lives of individuals, okay? We also see that about half of um, African-American black students get their start at the community college. And there's a benefit to that, right? Think of your experience here at Santa Fe, right? I went to UF, so I, I see both differences. So when I went to UF, I showed up as a freshman. I will never forget this, okay? So I was on financial aid. This is when I was an uh, undergraduate. You know, my parents dropped me off. They spent a couple of days, make sure I was okay. And then they left. They were like, okay, we'll see you for um, Christmas. All right. So here I am. I'm in the dorm. I had a little bit of money because they gave me some money. But I'm waiting for my financial aid to come in. All right. And I'm waiting. You know, August goes by. September goes by. October goes by. And I'm like, okay, I don't have any food to eat. I don't have any money to buy any food. Fortunately, you guys will figure out when you go to university, there's always free food somewhere around, okay? So I went to a whole bunch of club activities and everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, free pizza, free Chinese food, you know. And it was all because there was one little form that nobody told me I needed to sign to release my financial aid, okay? Now imagine at Santa Fe, somebody would have reached out to you and said, hey, your aid hasn't dispersed. Okay, you need to come in and fill out this form. Okay? And so the environment was different. My Calculus One class, I had 600 people in my Calculus One class. So the faculty member was way down there. Okay? And if you wanted to talk to the faculty member, you had to wait because there were 50 students waiting to talk to the faculty member. Okay, here at Santa Fe, you guys talk to your professors all the time. You have incredible access to your faculty members, okay? So if you find that I really like this teaching, I really like teaching at the college level, and you want that close interaction with your students, okay, state community college is where you can find it. So a lot of our minority students are gonna come through here. 51% of Hispanic students are gonna come through the community college system. And a little bit more, a third of our white students are gonna come through the community college system. And we see about 40% of our Asian students come through the community college system. So the community college system impacts a lot of the students that are educated here in the United States, okay? All right. So again, 
be thinking about it, okay? Be thinking about, is this a possible career choice for me? Now, if you do decide you wanna be a faculty member and you were one of the lucky ones that successfully got offered a position here or at any of the community colleges, some of you may decide, hey, I wanna do more, okay? I really remember that Dr. Moody and his conversation and I thought, oh, chair of the department, hmm. I think I might wanna look into that, okay? So, how do you become an administrator? In fact, when someone says an administrator, what comes to mind? What do you guys think an administrator does? We administrate, yeah, but what does that mean? Any of you guys are managers at any of the positions where you work or have been? What do managers do? Okay. It's about the people. All right. So when you're thinking about being an administrator, you're thinking about the people. Because at the college level, that is what makes the institution work. When you have good people, you will have a good institution. And we'll see one of the jobs of the administrator is to care about the people who you are managing, okay? So if you are thinking about that type of role, okay, one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna start thinking about what skills do I need to have to be a successful administrator? And I'll give you a, a little bit of hint on some of those skills a little bit later, okay? You also want to learn how to work with people and manage projects. Okay? This is gonna be one of the biggest jobs of an administrator slash manager, okay? You work with people, right? You manage projects. You have to get things done. And it can be a rewarding career, all right? Build a strong CV, you're gonna do that regardless, okay? All right, and you guys are getting a lot of training in this class on how to build strong CVs. CV is usually the first thing that somebody's gonna see. I cannot tell you how many times in screening committees, we'll look at someone's CV and we'll be like, seriously? I'm like, okay, we don't even bother looking at it. Cause I got 50 other people I gotta look at, okay? So you got to have that first impression where they look, they say, hmm, all right, this person is worth thinking about a little bit more, okay? That's what you wanna do, all right? So build your strong CV. Uh, earn a terminal degree. Okay? Um, and this is particularly when, you want to when you're thinking about a higher level administrative responsibility. So if you wanna be a dean, or if you wanna be a vice president or associate vice president, or just go for it all and be president, okay? you're gonna to need to have a terminal degree, right? Now, you don't have to do what I do. You don't have to spend 12 years in school continuously until you get your PhD, all right? In fact, I would encourage you to take some time to go work in industry or do something different to say, do I really want to get this graduate level degree, okay? Find a mentor. Find someone who is doing what you want to do, okay? Get that person to mentor you, to figure out how are you so successful at what you're doing? How did you get to the point of where I want to be, okay? That is key. Find yourselves a mentor. And this is one of the reasons why I'm kind of advocating for you guys to come join us, all right? We need diverse groups of individuals in the community college system, okay? It's something we're struggling with right now. And we want you guys to come and add to that because you guys eventually are gonna become mentors, okay? And then look to be a faculty first, okay? Most administrators start out as a faculty and then they kind of work their way up through the ranks, okay? So again, if you're thinking about this, if you're thinking about this type of career path, okay? This is one of the ways in which you can get to that path, okay? 
Just because you have a graduate degree, that doesn't mean you always have to be a researcher, okay? All right, so if I wanted to be an administrator, and we'll go through these real quickly, what are some of the good key aspects I should be looking to implement, okay? Well, it starts by being a good leader, and this will also apply if you decide to do it um, private industry, if you also decide to do the university level, all of this is about good leadership skills, okay? And so the first thing that you want to do is, in our business, we wanna maintain academic credibility, okay? You want for your staff to be able to come and say, this person knows what they're talking about, all right? That's very important. And that's where the terminal degree is very handy, okay? Where you have become an expert in that field and therefore, you're very versed in how to communicate. You're also very versed in understanding that field so that you can help your um, staff. You also wanna treat staff and colleagues with equity and integrity. This is huge, right? I live by the mantra, the golden rule. Do unto others as you have them do unto you, okay? And so when I look at someone and I interact with them, I always think, how would I want to be interacted with? And that means you wanna treat people with equity. And when I say equity, I mean fairness, okay? If you're gonna allow one person to do something, then you should make sure that all your staff members are able to do that, okay? And you treat them with integrity. These are professionals. These are humans who are trying to do the best they can. And so you want to make sure you treat them with that manner of respect, okay? Have personal integrity. So if you say you're gonna do something, do it, all right? Don't make up excuses of why, just say, I'm gonna do it. And if I can't make it happen, I'm gonna tell you why I couldn't make it happen, okay? Have a vision and the inspiration to execute that vision, okay? Oops, be a model. That came out of wrong thing, All right? Um, have a clear sense of direction. This also applies for when you're thinking about your own career path, okay? It's okay to make changes, but once you decide what you wanna do, have a clear sense of direction. Where do I wanna be in five years? Where do I wanna be in 10 years? How do I get there, okay? If you're working with a team, Create a shared vision, okay? This is what I want us to accomplish this year, or this is how I want us to operate, okay? And communicate that shared vision with the others. And you wanna create excitement about what direction you're going in, okay? Again, this may not, you may not necessarily wanna be an administrator at a college, but this also will serve you as you have the potential to be a leader in whatever um, feel you choose, okay? Challenging the norms, right? My faculty will verify I challenge the norms here, okay? I'm always like, well, why do we do it that way? Nobody gives me a good explanation, I go ask another person, okay? Eventually they will say, well, we don't know why we do it that way. I was like, okay, well, let's do it this way. Well, that works, okay, we'll do that. So don't be afraid to challenge the norms, all right? Never take anything at face value, okay? You guys tend to do that sometimes, right? You'll read something online or on Facebook and just assume, oh, that's the way it is. You always should be skeptical. All right, how do they know this? Where are their sources? Where did they get that from, okay? Uh, encourage differing opinions, okay? And you wanna foster respect for all viewpoints, right? Take risks. Okay. Sometimes the risk pays off. Sometimes it may not pay off in the way you want it to, but it eventually you'll find that you will learn and grow from that risk and experiment. Okay. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed about being a college student is you can do this. You can do this with very little consequences. Okay. You can go out and take risks and experiment. 
you can do things like say, I want to try this or I want to try that, okay? Take advantage of that, okay, while you guys are in college, right? Yes, get good grades, but also enjoy the experience, okay? Advance your team's cause. Accept responsibility for mistakes, okay? If you screw up, be like, all righty, my bad, okay? I'll fix it, but yes, I made a mistake. I screwed up, okay? Never throw somebody under the bus for your own mistakes, okay? You just don't want to do that, all right? Improve and learn and be human, okay? That's what it is all about, all right? Have empathy and understanding, okay? You can tell somebody, all right, you didn't do what you're supposed to do, okay? But do it in a respectful, empathetic way, okay? Have genuine concern about your team. If you don't care about where you work, if you don't care about the people you work for or the people who work for you, then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Okay, you wanna have genuine concern about the, your team, making sure that they have what they need to do the best that they can do, okay? Share your success, success and accomplishments, okay? And always bring food, <laughs> okay? All right, you wanna encourage camaraderie, you wanna encourage this collegiality that we like at the college environment. Okay, and so yes, we have a lot of food at our department level activities, okay? You wanna use data to help you make informed decisions. And you wanna learn from research about your student populations, okay? And so we look at the data. Guess we may be educators, but we're also scientists, okay? We also are in the science of making sure that what we're doing, the techniques that we're employing is delivering the information in the best possible way so that you guys can best benefit from that information, okay? And lastly, I'll leave you guys with this. Enjoy the ride, right? You're gonna spend sometimes 10, 12, 13 hours a day doing this career, whatever career you decide to do. If you're not enjoying it, okay, think about how the quality of life is decreased for not enjoying it, okay? When you come home at the end of the day, you may be tired, but you're like, oh, I got a lot done today. That was a good day, okay? Even though some days I'm like, all right, it's seven o'clock. I've already been here for 12 hours and I had two more hours before I can get this report in, okay? I'm okay with that, you know? At the end of the day, I come home and I'm like, well, wow, I'm exhausted but I enjoyed what I was doing. I was making a difference. So you want to enjoy the ride, okay? All right? So again, if those of you who have never thought about a community college, being a part of a community college, it can be a rewarding career, okay? And so as you guys are matriculating your way through the university and you're thinking about getting a graduate level degree, okay? If you don't like doing research and you don't want to work for a company, this might be a career for you, okay? Alrighty, thank you guys very much. Any questions? <laughs>